Hi there guys, today we're going to be talking about interpenetrations and as you can see we have two shapes, one shape penetrating the other. Alright, I'm going to go and look at my normal view and um, if I zoom in on this shape over here I can clearly see the one penetrating the other and I've got clear lines, fold lines from these points. Now the whole object of the game here is going to be for us to clearly be able to uh, project orthographically these front view, top view and left side views and find these points of penetration. All right. I want to spin this around for you so that you can see that that is in fact the hexagonal prism and it is penetrating the square prism. It is also penetrating at a perpendicular angle so that should give us a little bit more feedback as to how we're going to go about projecting this object. Okay so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to make a certain things available like the top view which is providing us the square shape and I have also been playing around a little bit ahead of time showing you guys the fact that if I'm going to be looking at this object from the top let's zoom that in a bit from the top I would have had to use an auxiliary view to project this shape onto the basic or the major shape alright auxiliary views will come into play a lot more as we go along in this video. Okay, so now that we've covered that, let's see what we'd have to get up to. Right, over here we'll need to project first things. Our front view projections need to lead into our top view. I'd need to have an auxiliary view to be able to find all of these points. Remember, they are falling within one line, and I would not be able to find that these points without the actual auxiliary view. Right here, I've already projected all these lines across. They are all horizontal. And please take note that when I look at this object from the top, I will not be able to see the base of this prism. So therefore, that will be a straight line right there. I've used this auxiliary view to project all my lines straight through. And I have found points of penetration. My complete top view will look like so. This is it right here. And once I've found these points of penetration, what I need to do now is to project them upwards. I'm going to go hide this shape over here for us. Okay, so that's what my front view would look like. Once I've found my complete top view, remember, as I said, each one of these points of penetration, I'd need to go ahead and project up from my top view to my front view. Okay, once I've actually projected these lines up, you'll notice that they will fall in line. I've already found these points for you guys. So those points fall in line with each one of these lines projected right across. Please take note, I've projected from the interpenetration points all the way up. You'll see that it goes through two points in my top view, and in my front view I only see one point. This means that I have one point on the other side of the actual object. So this one point represents two points. My front view in completion looks like so. And if I had to take away the actual projection lines, you'll see that that is exactly what my front view would look like. 
I then would have to go a step further and go and include my x, y axes. And I'd have to go and project all my lines. Now that looks like a lot of lines, but I'd like to go through this with you. These lines over here being projected are the typical lines that would shape my left side view. Please remember that each one of those lines are found from the different objects. Let's focus on the main object first. The main object would be my square prism. This is going to be the front view of the square prism and I'd have to take the heart of the square prism across. Simply separate the two objects, work on one object at a time and you'll be fine. I then go ahead from my top view and project its projection lines across to the 45 degree line and up. A clear number system here would, would be a very, very uh, good use. All right, once I've projected the main object across, go ahead and project the smaller object across. Okay, the smaller object, which is my hexagonal prism penetrating this main shape, would have to be projected across from my top view. When it hits the front, uh, the, the 45 degree line, I'd have to project it upward. In my front view, this is the hexagonal prism. I'd have to project those points right across to my left side view. Note that I haven't projected them right through. I've only projected them from between this line and that line. Because it gives me the parameter in which this shape is going to be fitting. I've already gone ahead and uh, put the points down for you guys. So there they are there. Remember this point over here down below represents two points. And if I project it across, I see those two points down below. The height of this prism, remember that point over there represents two points. When I project it across, I can see those two points. And this point over here represents two points. They are going to be the widest points. I project them across and I found them over here. Remember, number system would be ideal because then you'll be able to find or just join the numbers. Right, so my left side view would then have that as my, my hexagonal shape. And now I'm going to focus on my development. The development over here, you'll realize that I've actually skipped right through. There's the left side view. I've used the left side view and projected it across. I've used the information, which is the height, and projected it across. You'll note that I haven't actually closed this object. I have not yet found the necessary line length to use. I'm going to have to take each one of my base edge lengths and go and mark them off on this line. All right. So right there you'll see I've opened up my compass to the base edge le length. Please note that I've used my top view base edge length. There it is there. From that point to that point to go and mark it off from here to here. Right, so once I've opened up my compass, I put it onto this point over here and I scribe the arc. Go to the new point and I scribe a new arc. I go to the new point and scribe another, and then yet another. After I've found these points, I'm gonna have to go ahead and project them straight up. Right. Take note that from this point to this point over here, which is that point to that point over there, is my base edge. You'll notice that I've now been 
I was now able to close this entire loop over here. After I've developed each one of these lines or projected each one of these lines upwards, I'm going to have to go ahead and project my actual shape that I'm looking for, the actual hexagon. Remember, when I put a piece of paper around my front view, my left side view, or the object, the main object, which is the square prism, I'd like to unfold it and see what it would look like. Take into consideration that I've now got a hexagonal hole that's going to appear somewhere. I'm not going to be using my top view. My top view measurements are of utmost importance. Remember, I can't see the exact measurement from this line to this point. That is because this line is actually far forward or closer to me than this line would be. This is a slant edge, or I would say a slant face rather, that is leaning away from me to get the true length of the line between this point and that point over there I'd have to typically go look at my top view my top view will then show me the length from this point to that point which is this line to this point and you'll note that the distance from here to here is actually shorter than the distance from here to here this distance from these two points will be the true length and I'll need to use that true length so whenever you are busy working or taking the measurements please do not measure from your front view always measure from where you're going to be getting your true length which in this case will be my top view the measurement shown from that point is 16.12 and I'm going to show you in a moment where I'm going to be using it the next measurement I'm going to be needing is the point from here to here. I've numbered them nicely for you guys. One, two, three, four. And remember that these points here are the points of inter interpenetration. So I'm going to have to measure from three to the point and from four to the point. I'd like to highlight both those. There we go. I'm going to be using those two points across on my development. I'm going to quickly zoom across to our development. And you'll note that I have these development or these lines projected right up to the top. I've moved and measured away from number two because my measurements were between two and three and three and four is my numbers all right let's make it a little bit easier for us to see You'll note that the, this distance over here was taken from my top view and that these distances were also taken from my top view to the second point. I measured from 2 to the point and from 3 to the point, from 3 to the point on the other surface and from 4 to the other point. Those would have to be projected straight up because remember these are going to be giving me the points of my hexagon. And as you can see, these three lines already have been projected right across. These are my hearts off the ground, and they need to be projected off from my front view or my left side view in order to give me the correct hearts off the ground. Right, now I'm going to be plotting those points. Typically, I know that this point over here is going to give me or that line over there is going to give me the two widest points I'm going to be able to plot it over there and over there the top ones will give me points closer to each other which is going to be that point there 
and that point over there and the bottom one is exactly the same please note that also if you had a numbering or a lettering system over here you'll be able to find those points a lot easier because they would coincide with each other this point over here would be projected up that point over there would be labeled the same way projected across and those two labels would then meet up over there and the same with each and every one of these points projected my final development then would look something like this okay like that so right now what we've managed to do is be able to um, draw the top view the left side view as an orthographic projection and then simply project the information off my left side view right across uh, to uh, be able to find the development remember to go and measure from my top view because it will give you the actual uh, true lengths or the true lengths from point to point and um, then you'll be able to stipulate exactly your accurate points on your development. I hope this drawing has uh, assisted you guys. Please know that you can actually go ahead and rewind. I'm going to use the older term, but you can skip back and replay the video at any point in time. Uh, stop it and draw the, the actual shape yourself. Thank you for listening.